One of my first experiences at Stevens Point, after going to classes with my mother when I was in high school, I was selected to attend Laird Leadership Day. Our U.S. Congressman was Mel Laird. It really opened my eyes to a larger world, and uh, he brought with him uh, various cabinet secretaries at the time. So uh, we were exposed to a lot of speakers, and several of the cabinet secretaries were women, which of course was just a remarkable thing for for some of us to uh, to see that one could be a leader back then. I wrote for a film journal that we started, but along with the things we did was we invited Frank Capra to come speak, the famous uh, writer and uh, uh, director of films. His autobiography I still treasure, um, but I also treasure correspondence from him as well. Uh, quite a gentleman, quite a remarkable story, uh, and uh, one of my favorite memories. Like many women, when my mother grew up, you either did not take a job outside of the house or you became a teacher. So she had gotten a two-year teaching degree. And so when I was eight, nine, 10, she decided to return and get a four-year teaching degree. She would have me drive 45 minutes west of home to Stevens Point to take night courses. It was interesting because I wasn't thinking about college at that age, much less I was unaware of courses like cultural anthropology. I was fascinated by them. It opened my eyes to the world. When I was a student at UWSP, the chancellor at that time was Lee Dreyfus, and he taught a class in communications and it involved research. He evidently noticed in me that I took some joy in researching things and reading and connecting dots. He said, you know, you would make a good college professor. You like to research, you like to teach these things, assemble them, put them together, advance the knowledge. In seeing that in me, he literally held a mirror up to me that helped me understand who I was. I often think the only way we know about ourselves is by the mirrors others hold up to us. If the mirrors other people hold up to us are negative, then of course we see that in ourselves. When, like Lee, you hold up something positive, you reinforce the good, you help us see ourselves, perhaps as we haven't known ourselves, and then you help make the good stuff happen. The professors there really went out of their way to help me and my fellow students to be more of who we are or aspire to be. They went to extraordinary lengths to give us opportunities. The community also lifted me up. I had uh, business people there seek me out offer me opportunities. These are, have been friends of mine for decades, remain close friends. So it's not just people employed by the university, it is the whole community. For some reason, my parents subscribed to a lot of newspapers. And the point was you read a lot, you synthesize things, you get the conservative point of view, the liberal point of view, the local news, the national news, the international news. And in reflecting on that, they set me up for what I do professionally today. I read, I study, I synthesize, I compare information, I weigh points of view, then I synthesize it and organize it and teach it to others. I think everyone has a sort of ministry in the world. I mean it with a small m. Some people do it with a religious ministry. Some people do it with public service. Some people do it with childcare or making a wonderful home or with teaching. It just so happens that my small M is something I love to do, which is opening people's eyes. That's really what teaching is. If you open people's eyes to the world in different cultures or different points of view, you never see the world the same way again. In essence, a bit of what I do today is essentially cultural anthropology. The difference is that the culture I study is today's culture. I like to still think of myself as a cultural anthropologist, which is a bit of what I sort of dreamed about being in those days I would travel with my mom to class.